is Canon about to release an RF 14mm f2.8 or an RF 18mm f2.0? We've got documentation to show Canon's research on the embodiments for both of these lenses. Canon filed patent application JP 2024 046687 on March the 23rd, 2022, and it was published on April the 3rd, 2024. Canon claimed to provide a new compact optical system with high optical performance, hinting at L series. The patent diagrams illustrate the three main parts, the front unit, an aperture diaphragm, and the rear unit. And the rear unit is closest to the camera's image sensor. To ensure good image quality, Canon's developed specific requirements that you can see here. These include the distance from the front of the lens to the image sensor, the size of the image circle, the refractive index of lenses, the size of the lens surfaces, and the gap between the lens elements. I've included a link to the patent application in the description down below if you'd like to read up on the plane and the aspheric data for the 14 and 18 millimeters. The patent also includes the aspheric mathematical formula, which certainly looks complex. X is the amount of deviation from the surface vertex of the optical axis direction. H is the height of the optical axis in the direction perpendicular to the optical axis. R is a paraxial curvature radius, K the conic constant, and A3 to A15 are the aspheric coefficients. But I'm no Gerald Undone. I'm not going to take you through the mathematical formula plugging in all the various different variables. Instead, I'm going to raise this back up to a conceptual level. If you want to read up on the details and plug in the formula into Excel, well, again, I have the link to the patent application in the description down below. So let's take a look at the lens embodiments. First off, dealing with a 14 millimeter f2.8 L series, and we're going to predict this one could potentially be a USM. It has a focal distance of 13.82 and an aperture of f2.8. The angle of view, 29.72, and the image height, 7.89, with a lens length of 16.32, and the back focus, 4.83. But the 18mm f2, it has a focal distance of 17.2, and of course the f number is 2.06. The angle of view, 24.65, the image height 7.89, the lens length is 21.52, and the back focus 5.22. So what is the likelihood that we could see a 14mm f2.8 L series lens or an 18mm f2? Well, there is a good chance of it. This is Canon's research and development, after all, codified in a patent application. But with any patent application, just because we have some lens embodiments, doesn't mean to see that we'll see any of these lenses or all of these lenses coming in future products. When it comes to leaked information regarding Canon RF lenses, well, they're far less accurate than when it comes to camera bodies. But there is one source that's proven to be highly accurate over the past four or five years, and that's Canon Rumors RF Lens Roadmap, published in late 2020 and updated as recently as early 2024. Everything you see here in green has come to pass. But everything in white is something that was predicted either as back as 2020 or early as late 2023 and, well, we haven't seen yet. There is a 14mm, but that's a tilt shift lens at f4. Now, we don't have an 18mm. The closest we have to that is a 16mm, which Canon has already released, an f2.8 pancake lens, not an L series. Although there is a 24mm f1.4 that is supposed to come out, but again, that's very different from what we see in this patent application. It's certainly plausible, possible, that Canon will announce a 14mm f2.8 L series lens. It's also possible that Canon could also announce an 18mm f2 L series lens, or both of these lenses. One thing these patent applications tell us is that these are lens embodiments that Canon has considered. We don't always get all the lens embodiments, but usually it's pretty good that we might get at least one of these. Canon's lens roadmap is pretty accurate, but it doesn't always list off every single lens that comes out. Which of these two lenses would you like to see? Well, I conducted a poll on April the 4th, 2024, and at the time of creating this video, it's almost neck and neck, with 53% wanting or preferring the RF 
14 millimeter F 2.8 L series over the RF 18 millimeter F2. So what's my preference? Well, it's for the 18 millimeter F2 L series lens and the polls are still open. So if you would like to exercise your chance to vote, go ahead and do so. However, if you are interested in purchasing some RF lenses on the marketplace right now, there's still some amazing deals and I'm just going to highlight a few of them. You can save $300 on the Canon RF 24-70 f2.8 as well as the RF 70-200mm f2.8 and the Super Telephoto, the RF 100-500 f4.5-7.1. to and those aren't the only lenses on sale. Those are just a few that I wanted to call out. They're available for sale in the United States at B&H, Adorama, and Amazon.com. And if you'd like to purchase any of these lenses, please consider using my affiliate links down below. These ones right here, they really help this channel grow. I get anywhere from 2 to 12% back, and it really helps fund the purchases of lenses like the 100 to 500, the 200 to 800, the 100 millimeter f2.8, and the list goes on. For all of you that have use my affiliate links in the past to purchase camera bodies, lenses and accessories, or even computers. Thank you so much. It really does make a huge difference. It's allowed this channel to grow to where it is today, to where I not only talk about these lenses when we get ready for announcement, but I'm actually able to purchase them, use them day in and day out and tell you what it's like to work with these lenses. I just recently had somebody ask me a question about the 100 millimeter F 2.8, this guy right here. And he said, okay, sure. As a macro, it's a great lens, but could you use it as just a 100 millimeter lens? Do you have to use it as a macro? And I told him a story about when my son was um, going for his green belt at karate. I didn't have, I really wanted a 70 to 200 millimeter, but I didn't have one. I needed one. The 100 to 500 isn't wide enough and it creates a lot of noise. But then I thought to myself, you know, if I go ahead and order this 70 to 200 millimeter, it's probably not going to arrive in time. Why not use this? A 100 millimeter prime, it's an f2.8, and it did a terrific job. It's a really terrific lens, and I'm very happy um, with it. So that's one of the great things about your support for this channel. I'm able to not just review these lenses and use them, but use them day in and day out so I can actually field your questions and give you feedback, which is Work, it, it works great for all of us. So again, a big thanks to all of you for commenting, for subscribing, following me on X and using my affiliate links. Now, if you're living in Canada or elsewhere in the world, certainly visit your local camera store. In Canada, my local camera store that I use is Downtown Camera and I always contact Patrick. If you go ahead and mention my name, don't be surprised if you pay a little bit different than what's listed on the product. So give Patrick a call if you're looking at the 200 to 800, if you're looking at the R5, let me stop that. Someone's trying to call me right now. It could be new information leaks on the R5 Mark II, but it's my wife, so probably not. But anyhow, so big thanks to everybody. A big thanks to those of you that have used my affiliate links. Things are getting exciting. I wouldn't be surprised if um, in the next up and coming weeks we'll get leaked information on the R5 Mark II. I think what will have to happen, we'll have to wait for NAB 2024 to conclude. It starts on the 13th and finishes, concludes on the 17th. So by the middle of this month, we should start to get leaked information on the R5 Mark II and the R1. And I'm talking about accurate, credible information. Not all the garbage we've received over the past couple of years. It's been bad for the R1. We've re we started receiving leaked information on the R1 going back to 2021. What a roller coaster ride that has been. And the R5 Mark II uh, starting Black Friday of 2022, and that proved to be wrong. It was really awesome too, a detailed list of specifications, but there were so many red flags, I doubted they were accurate, and it's one of those occasions where I wish I was wrong, but I wasn't. Anyhow, thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day, and we'll see you again soon.